I'm gonna tell you a carrier name, and I want you to basically tell me what comes to your mind. T-Mobile, when I say T-Mobile to you, just a couple of words. Oh my God, the first word that came to my head was ghetto. Ooh, welcome back to the 504. That was a Sprint commercial that was pulled recently because there was a lot of backlash over the white woman describing T-Mobile as ghetto. Sprint CEO has responded by tweeting, we are sharing real comments from real customers, maybe not the best choice of words by the customer, but not meant to offend anyone. All right, so tonight we're hanging out with Kevin Griffin and Rocio Mora, and I want to know, were you guys offended by the commercial? I wasn't offended, but I wouldn't have used the commercial. I wouldn't right, have yeah. done it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't offended at right, all. It was, right. It's hilarious. It's, some things, you know, they aren't like racially charged or anything like that. You know, some people may be offended by it. I wasn't. I just wouldn't have. As an executive, I definitely wouldn't right. have used it at all. Who was right. sitting at this board when they were like, we That's have the best new commercial coming out? White people. I don't know. White <laughs> probably. White people. No. So, <laughs> Probably, I mean, but but you're right though. I don't. I just don't understand who would be behind the marketing for this to say no. this is okay to put out no. on on national television. And even it from a marketing standpoint, if I go, oh my goodness, T-Mobile's so ghetto, is that going to make me not buy them and buy Sprint specifically? No. I mean, oh. I don't even see where where this is going. You have on T-Mobile colors also. Oh, <laughs> so are you calling me ghetto, Kevin? <laughs> I know you're shady. I know how shady you are. All right. Shady so after a couple of hours. Sprint CEO responded was basically like, hey, we didn't mean to offend anyone. The backlash went on so bad that he eventually took it down. Do you guys yeah. think it should have been taken down? I think it shouldn't have been put up in the first place. That's yeah, it. that's probably that's the it. best point. It shouldn't have left. It was an awkward mm -hmm. one. All yeah. right, guys, so an Australian man spotted the girl of his dreams in the supermarket. Well, now he's trying to find her. Sounds kind of romantic at first. A guy, a friend of the guy posted the woman's pic on the store's Facebook page. This is the picture asking if the store could help find her. It spiraled into an online campaign to help reunite the pair. Here's the thing, though. He never spoke to her, and he took this picture of the back of her. So some people were like, even though this is this viral romantic campaign, this is just creepy. You didn't talk to her, and you took a picture of the back of her mm -hmm. without her knowing. I'm, I'm, I want to hear from the men and the ladies on this I'm, one. Okay. I can't speak for everybody. Okay. <laughs> this is my I'm memory. a hopeless romantic, so when I first found out about this, I was actually like, oh, that's actually kind of cute. You know, like, he's, he's trying to reach out. Maybe he was a little shy. He didn't approach her. Okay. This was his way of trying to approach her. I don't know. Everybody's using social media for different reasons. But then when I saw how fast it escalated and how, you know, it was just, he wouldn't stop, you know, just kind of trying to reach out to her, then it's, okay, then it gets kind of, Weird. Okay, so if a man saw you in the Rouse's after this, uh -huh. put them curls up, <laughs> right? Would you be okay or not? Would you respond? Would it be cute? As long as he tagged my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is so hilarious because most of the women, most of the people who disagreed with this man doing this were women. Well, but if this was packaged mm -hmm. in a movie and you guys sat at the theater and watched this as a love story, okay. you guys would love it. Oh my God. I don't disagree. Sometimes no. in fantasy yeah. we might would like it, but in real life, right. stalker, stalker. I don't, think, yeah. I don't think it was a situation of stalking. I think it was a situation of him trying to find out who the girl was and thought she was cute. If he had spoken to her, I think it would be different. But how is this the girl? I mean, she looks like the girl of your dreams. Mm -hmm. Great. But I mean, right. we could what find if, a couple what of other women who look like her. What if he I'm was sure like nervous? He was. What if he was at work and it was a situation of him rushed? fraternizing or rushed? Or rushed. He didn't have you the time. Know. You like know what, you two? Been... Then you go help reunite them. And when this girl <laughs> ends up on the forensic channel, oh, no. <laughs> okay? I warned you people. <laughs> Moving on. The CEO of AMC says he's considering allowing texting and movie theaters and millennials are getting all the blame. He said you can't tell a 22-year-old to turn off their cell phone. That's not how they live their life. So people are now really mad because they're like, I don't want texting in no. the theater. No, no, no I'm, I'm like a huge moviegoer fan and I it irks my nerves when I see somebody, you can be five rows ahead or yeah. 50 rows ahead. When I see that light, it's distracting, it's annoying and I get it, everybody wants to be on their phone but you have to respect everyone else's time and their money. I mean, you're going out there to go watch a movie. You're spending your money. You don't want to be interrupted or distracted by yeah. other people. It's just rude. I also wonder if this is really something millennials want or is this an older person saying what millennials want? Because even though you might sneak in a text, mm -mm. do you actually want the theater to allow texting? Well, no. 
for I don't think it's a millennial situation. I think it's more of the the young. It's funny. It's younger people. Yeah, than it's probably even, it's long, probably younger even younger than, than that. Yeah. Um, I text sometimes during the movies, but we I make sure my screen too. is yeah. low, mm-hmm. the resolution is low, and things like that. And so, like in your uh, shirt. Yeah, like but yeah. you wouldn't bother them to actually it. allow it, would you? Well, mm, no. I probably wouldn't. Okay. Just to no. keep the etiquette going of, of going to right. movies and things like that. Right, because then it's like going to get out of control no. where there's lights everywhere. Right. right. So people are, and then also you you run the risk of like everyone like boldly coming out and yeah. filming a movie right. and things like that. So it's like, nah. Right. And I, um, so I, I'm a AMC subscriber. Or not subscriber. <laughs> like, you're in like, the, like a stubs plug, card plug. member right. or whatever. <laughs> okay. So I did get the email from AMC <gasps> saying that they were going to, stu- or they, that they weren't going to allow the texting, but, um, I guess when they were first talking about it, they right. said that maybe they'd reserve some seats in the very top of the stadium or the top of the auditorium, excuse me, for people who are interested in texting during okay. the movie. But that's still wrong, because what if I want to yeah. sit in the top? You might want to sit in the top. You're going to take my spot. Not really. She was brought on oh. to be the curl expert. She's our AOC hey, expert man. tonight, too. Well, you know. All right, fashion. Rocio. <laughs> All right, guys, up next, it's time to solve a Reddit dilemma. Could you be in a relationship with someone who slept with a lot, a lot, I'm talking about a lot of people? We're talking about it next. Thank you.